glad to see you today. We're going to have so much fun. Today we're doing more baking science. Have you ever noticed when you eat something that's baked, it's really soft and it's fluffy and really delicious? Have you ever wondered how they do that? Well, today we're gonna to learn three different ways that we can do that. We're gonna learn a way that they do it with a biological way, which means with something living. We're gonna find out how they do it a chemical way, which means they use chemicals to make that then fluffy. And we're gonna do a physical one, which means we're gonna actually put the air in what we're baking. So the first one, the biological, can you think of anything that's alive that helps make baked goods fluffy? Well, the answer is yeast. So I want you to think about how it's something that's alive, like yeast. How would it make bread and cookies and cakes fluffy? The next one we're gonna talk about is the chemical one. And for that, we use baking soda and baking powder. Now, we've used baking soda before. What happened when we added an acid to baking soda? Did it get really bubbly? Did it release a lot of carbon dioxide? Now what happens if you think that carbon dioxide is released inside what you're baking? Okay, so and then the last one we're going to use egg whites. We're going to use just the whites from this. We're going to get rid of the yolks and we're actually going to use a mixer to put air inside the egg whites and make it really fluffy and delicious. Are you ready to get started? Okay. First, let's start with our yeast. So we're going to make bread with our yeast. To make bread, we need water. I have 12 ounces of water. I have some flour, some salt, and our yeast. We're going to add three cups of flour, a teaspoon and a half of salt, and then we're going to add half a teaspoon of yeast. Now I'm using this active dry yeast. If you're using the rapid rise or bread machine yeast, you only need to use a quarter of a teaspoon. This is a no need bread, so it's gonna rise for a long time. Go ahead and give that a stir, get it all mixed in, and then we will go ahead and add our water to this. Go ahead and stir it up. I like to use the back of my spoon because I find it works better. Sometimes I find I need more water, so go ahead and just see how it comes out and see if you need some more water. So once the dough starts sticking to the side of the bowl, you're done. So give it a couple more good stirs and then get yourself some cling wrap, wrap it up and let it sit overnight to rise. So let's take a look. Our dough has more than doubled in volume. It's got all these little dark holes in it. Those are bubbles made by the yeast. What the yeast is doing is it's actually eating the carbohydrates in the flour. And as it eats them, it's releasing gases. And those gases make the little holes in the bread that make it fluffy. So after we bake it, let's look here. Do you see those holes in the bread? Those are all made by yeast. Yeast are using biological processes to make the bread nice and fluffy. One more view, here's the inside of the bread. You can see all the little pockets that were made in there, all the little holes. Those were all made by yeast eating. So here's what you'll need to make the muffins we're gonna do for our chemical reaction. Today we're gonna to use our baking powder and our baking soda, and they're gonna create a chemical reaction inside the muffins that make them nice and fluffy and delicious. So here's my batter in my cups, and the baking soda and baking powder are actually already working. They're already making little bubbles inside of there. They do that as soon as they get wet. Now I'm gonna put them in the oven. They've been baking for a little bit. You can see that they've gotten bigger. Here's the finished product. You can see that they're nice and big and fluffy. 
and that was caused by the heat of the oven also activated that baking soda and baking powder and made it so they released a gas that are gonna create little pockets inside and make the muffins nice and fluffy and really tasty. Let's cut them open and see what they look like. Let's look inside. Can you see all those little pockets in there? All the little spaces that were made by the gas bubbles inside? Those were all from the baking powder and baking soda. Last but not least, we have our physical method of getting air into our baked goods. So here I have three egg whites and three quarters cup of sugar, and I have them over a hot pot of water. And I'm doing this just to melt the sugar. I'm not actually cooking the eggs. I am just melting the sugar, and I'll know it's ready when I stick my fingers in there, and it doesn't feel gritty, that it feels nice and smooth. So let's check it, and that's ready to go. So we'll go ahead and transfer this to the mixer. Before we start mixing, go ahead and add any flavorings you want. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of lemon zest. And those just make this really special and yummy. Let's go ahead and get this started. I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing because it's gonna take a little bit of time to get this all whipped up. But we're gonna start it pretty low and then get it higher and higher speed as we go along. You can see the volume increasing. That's some of the air that's getting stuck in those eggs and creating little pockets that make it super yummy. Now it's gotten even bigger and it looks like it's changed color. But look how beautiful it's starting to look. Nice and shiny and white and really, really fluffy. So our meringue is ready and we can tell because it stands straight up when we do that. And so I'm gonna get a bag ready to make our tasty little meringue cookies. So to make the cookies, you're gonna to wanna to use either one of these pastry bags, or you can just use a gallon size bag, or you can just plop some spoonfuls onto the cookie sheet. I'm gonna do this, I want them to look a little bit fancy, so I'm gonna go ahead and prepare this. So my pastry bag is ready, and I put some food coloring along the sides just to make my cookies really pretty. And now I'm gonna go fill this up with my meringue. So I'm gonna just make these real quick. And then once I get them all over this cookie sheet, I'm gonna heat my oven to 200. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pop those in the oven. They need to be in there for about an hour and a half. And then you just turn the oven off and let them cool right in there. So there they are. I'm just gonna leave them alone for about two hours. Here's our beautiful cookies. I'm going to open one up so you can see what it looks like inside. Now these had all the air bubbles in them before we put them in the oven. So they didn't actually grow anymore in the oven. But now we'll look and see what they look like on the inside. Can you see those? Get real close. See all those little tiny holes? Those were all put there when we physically whipped those egg whites with our mixer. And they are delicious. Okay, so how did that work? Well, we know with the egg whites, we were actually just physically putting air into the egg whites and that put, made it fluffy and delicious. With these ones, especially this double acting baking powder, what happens is when it gets wet, it makes it release some carbon dioxide and that makes little bubbles inside the batter. And then when you add heat, it's gonna release even more carbon dioxide and make the batter even fluffier. That's why those muffins grew even after we put them in the oven. Now with yeast, yeast has to be alive while, in order to work. And when it's in this jar, it's sort of, it's like it's sleeping. It's like it's hibernating. And then when we add something wet to it and something with carbohydrates that it can eat, it sort of wakes up and it starts eating those com those carbohydrates, like nom, nom, nom. And as it's eating them, it's also releasing gases. And that creates the bubbles in the bread that make it nice and fluffy. Now, yeast stop working when they get really hot because it kills the yeast. So they, it doesn't rise as much in the oven as, it, as baking soda and baking powder did. Isn't it super interesting that we can have the same effect three different ways using our yeast and our baking soda and baking powder and our eggs. And they all work completely different ways, but they all work. I hope you had a great time. I know I did. I'll see you all next time. Bye.